Father, we just thank you for this time that we have to come together. We thank you, Lord God, that we are able to think about the time that you did so much for all of us, for the entire world. And we're so thankful, Lord, that we're celebrating Resurrection Day. We just bless you and praise your name. And Father, as we talk and as we speak one with another tonight, I just pray that the Spirit of the Lord will bring things to our remembrance, will bring the word of the Lord to our remembrance, and Father, that there will be people in the audience that will receive a healing even and, and uh, salvation and needs met and everything as we talk about our wonderful Lord and our wonderful Savior. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 And then here we are again for another roundtable. This is being recorded on April 17th, and I believe it was uh, a month ago we did our last mm -hmm. roundtable. So here we are, and, and we've decided that the direction we're going to go is Resurrection Day. Yes. Some people call it Easter. Some call it what it is, Passover. But we are going to call to it, refer to it at, uh, most of the time tonight as Resurrection, Resurrection. Day. And uh, one of the, uh, what's wrong with Easter? Does anybody have an idea? Because I mean, let's be honest. I grew up painting Easter eggs and chocolate bunnies <laughs> and whatever some of those pink candies are. And yet we knew what Easter was yeah. about. Yeah, yeah, it was like Christmas right. to us. It was just, hey, this is just some fun stuff. But we, it was never a doubt, no. Christ's birthday right. or the resurrection. Right. None of these things threw us, And and but some people Purists, and I have no beef with you. If you're a purist, I get it. It's important to know what your roots are and what the true history is. But Easter is somewhat of a pagan thing. Right. And and uh, Constantinople and some of those things when he declared everybody Russian, I mean Roman. <laughs> and then that would have been quite a miracle. And, <laughs> and well, but Putin may do that for us. Uh, but uh, when everything moves in that era from Jerusalem towards Rome, kind of where mm -hmm. we are now, where it was from the Judeo uh, Christian, eth the Judeo uh, uh, eschatology and everything else into the Roman based. Uh, so we, our number system, our calendar, yes. certain days were combined from the feast because the Romans, mm -hmm. I know this will come as a shock, the Romans were just didn't care really about anything. <laughs> and so your holiday was theirs, we'll take it. We like it. Is there a way we can make money on it? <laughs> well, not unlike the church today. Oh, wait a minute. That's a different story. So anyway, that's Easter. So if you hear a slip up and say it tonight, it, trust me, we're, we're not naive. We understand. This is about the Passover, celebration, the Passover that happened in Egypt when, the, when God yes, brought the yes. children of Israel out of Egypt with that final plague and the death angel passed over the houses because of the blood yes. on the doorpost. And we can reiterate that again. What was important? The people that were inside, that they were pure and they were righteous and they were holy? No. no. What caused the death angel to pass over? Oh, the, blood. the blood applied. And, and how about Egyptians? Yeah. Same Anybody way. that was in a house that had blood applied to the doorposts. Anybody. The blood of the lamb. The blood of the lamb. They were safe. Yes. So there was two things that I see right off is... I believe what I was told. Go do this. Mm -hmm. And you're going, oh, okay. So I believe. That's number one. Yes. Then number two is you believe the right thing. Right. Yes. In other words, well, I believe if I just go in my house, I'll be okay. No. And, it, well, that's a wrong belief. Mm -hmm. But you're partially right. But it, it was the blood on the doorpost. Right. It had yes. nothing to do with your ethnicity or your religion, your gender your race, it had nothing to do with anything except for do you believe what was said to you by God? Mm -hmm. And then did you put what he wanted on the doorpost? Yes. Not what you think is right, not your good works and everything else. That's a whole other sermon. But that was the that was the, the crux of where we're going tonight. That is the issue. Was the yes. blood on the doorpost mm -hmm. of the house. Yes, and the blood was on the top and then on the two doorposts, but not on the threshold, because they did not walk on the blood. Mm. But it was the sign of the cross 
but they did not walk on the blood, but it covered them. And the death angel passed. And it, isn't it interesting that God provided a way from the destruction that he was bringing? <laughs> and that's the day that we're living today. Yes. Uh, we, as children of the living God, are not children of wrath. And I know people are talking about, oh, you know, somebody needs to pay for that sin. Well, somebody did. Yes. Jesus yes. paid the price. And so we believe that like Noah and like the children of Israel, that whatever would be coming on the earth, on judgment or whatever, that we are safe. If the because, blood's If applied. the blood, because we've been marked by the blood. Yes. If we have received Jesus yeah. Christ and we are covered by the blood, then those things continue to pass over us. New Testament, yes, uh, three or four times. We are not appointed to, to wrath, wrath if yes. the blood's on the doorpost. Amen. Right. Uh, another uh, thing is the judgment was not against the Egyptian people. Right, no, against their gods. It was specifically as stated in De uh, De Exodus there. It was against the gods of Egypt, the gods, the Panap, Pan the bunch of, <laughs> the lot of, the lot of right. gods. And, <laughs> and of, of which at the pinnacle was the pharaohs had finally become deities themselves mm -hmm. in their own minds. So this was God's capturing God's God, the Almighty's children, and holding them, and not being negotiate wouldn't negotiate, mm -hmm. would not negotiate, ten times, mm -hmm. ten times, and not negotiate. And finally, it just escalated to this point. The judgment came against their gods. All of the people that believed and held on to their gods, they were in that suffering part mm -hmm. it wasn't aimed at them it was aimed at their god right. right and all of those even egyptians who believed in god saying i can do this well what this isn't that what rahab did right when mm -hmm. the spies came yep. and they believed she was she was fearful you know she was afraid for her family and everything yes. else she believed the words of the spies and what she'd heard the rumors of egypt and right. everything mm -hmm. else that their god can get this done i'm going to get on their side yeah. And she was more fearful mm -hmm. of God than she was her own government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, she had reason to be afraid of her own government, I'm sure. Well, every governing body mm -hmm. is fear, has citizens in fear to an extent. But she believed that the living God was mm -hmm. scarier in the sense of, mm -hmm. of the power that he could bring, bring about to accomplish what they said he was going to do. But it's, it's interesting, though, with the Egyptians, even if they tru didn't truly believe in God, but they thought everything these Israelites are doing, God is protecting them, and I'm going to jump in their house. I'm going to be in their house just in case. And they were saved. Yeah, mm -hmm. and some of them we had had record earlier, yeah. like when it bring your servants out of the field, yeah. his hails yeah. coming and right. your cattle. Yeah. Right. And yeah. It literally said some of the Egyptians went home right. and did that. Yeah. And the ones that yeah. didn't lost their cattle yeah. and their servants. servants. Were yeah. Still. Right. Yeah. And yeah. so again, the principle right now, I think that we're talking about it at this point, is is we have a tendency to get a real religious attitude. If you've yes. got to love God, yeah. I'm going, dude. None of us came to God in love. Yeah. Every one of us came out of. I think my chances are better with you for some reason. I don't know what you're about. I don't know what's going on, whether it's the jailer with mm -hmm. Peter and Barnabas, you know, save me. He wasn't saying, Salvation. oh, save yeah. me. He was saying, my butt is in trouble. <laughs> They're going to kill me if the prisoners are gone. Yeah. Yeah. He was in yeah. fear. Rahab, it was save me. I don't, yeah. right. not I believe yeah. in your God. Yeah. I believe I have a chance with you and your God. Yes. Yes. I believe yes. somehow the jail's just open. Yes. Something's going on for you guys. Yeah. And, and you could go on down the line, the responses, mm -hmm. whether it was Pete, Paul falling off that donkey. Yes. And going, Lord, Lord. You know, it was like, I'm, I'm messed up here. <laughs> um, I thought I was serving God, but now I'm on this end of the yes. stick. I'm going like, yeah. it, yes. it was like, at some point you have to get over your religious thing and realize you just cry out to God. Yes. He doesn't yes. care why yes. you cry out. He just wants you to come to him. He loves you. Yes. He loves you. He yes. just what yes. a mother and a father. Yeah. Yes. If that baby cries out, it doesn't matter why they're crying. Yeah. They're going to go because yeah. they love the baby. Yeah. Not whatever the baby's going through. They don't care about that. They just want to get to the baby and make sure they're okay. That's how your father feels about you. Yes. But let's go yes. back to Rahab for a minute because I love this. And I know we're going to talk about resurrection, but 
I love the story of Rahab, and, and we could go on, um, but she saved her hide and her family, yet she's in the lineage of Jesus. Yes. And I love that because she was um, not a Jew. She was not of the children of Israel. She was outside, and she was Boaz's grandmother, which was probably a reason he was open to Ruth, who was a Moabitess, mm -hmm. because his own grandmother was not Mm -hmm. of, of the children of Israel, and she had been brought in. So his heart may have been open for Ruth because of that. But I love the fact that, that the lineage of Jesus is not pure by people yes. that did yes. everything yes. right, yes. but that, that he brought that it was from people that didn't. Because isn't that true of all? That's our story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they did the right thing. Oh, the, yes, at the time. The right time. thing, right. Which, which is, this is where God wants you to go. Yeah. And they didn't let anything get in the way, right. as is it Tamar or Tamara, who slept with their father-in-law, Judah, Tamar, yeah. to fulfill the word of God. The word of God is if a, bro if a husband dies right. in, yes. in Jerusalem, yes. the yes. Brother, then the yeah. brother has to raise up children to that brother's name, the dead brother's name. Mm -hmm. right. Judah made promises and said, yeah, my other son will, didn't give it to him. And so she kind of took matters in her own hand and played the prostitute. Yes. You're going, that's just yes. disgusting. She'd be thrown out at every church in America and around the world. And you're going, but you don't understand, God is not religious like you. Yeah. He sees right, righteousness. Yes. He is righteousness. And righteousness was fulfilling that thing. Well, she well, got pregnant and that, that hurt. She was in the lineage. She's yes. in the lineage, yes. yes. There's five women listed. And, and in the lineage, it's always men. But in the lineage of Jesus, there's five women that are listed. And Tamar's one. And even Judah said, you've been more righteous than me, even though she played Judah, the harlot. Yeah. Judah said to her, you've been more righteous than me because I withheld what was required. Mm -hmm. And so he was saying her actions of acting like a harlot were more righteous than him even because he did not fulfill what was supposed to be done. I just, I just love God. We, we build walls to keep God, keep God away from us. So that we can't get to God. You know, if you don't have enough faith, you can't get to God. But here's a good part. God comes and gets you. <laughs> he comes and gets us when I don't have enough faith. Because I love that scripture in Timothy, that when we are faithless, he, he is faithful. faithful. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Yes. Yes. So we come down through the ages and seeing all of these things and the blood, the Passover. Yes. The reason we have this season, this time, is that uh, this is when the Passover is celebrated. Yes. The Jews are having their Passover right. feasts and, mm -hmm. and their high Sabbath, which happened during that time of Jesus. The high Sabbath was just right at the right a couple of days before the actual Sabbath. Mm -hmm. And so you've got a couple of Sabbath things going on there on yes. that Passover week. Yes. Right. And and so you see he was killed or put to death on that high Passover right. or just right after it and then was in the grave, and then the, the disciples and them couldn't travel on the actual Sabbath on Saturday, Friday night to Saturday afternoon, or Saturday night. And then that night, or the next morning, he came up out of that grave, mm -hmm. because it was this resurrection, was that the, the fulfillment of what the type and shadow in Egypt was. The blood of bulls right. and goats on the doorpost had that kind of power, Imagine yes, what the yes. blood of the, the Lamb of God, the eternal priest, has for you and me in our hearts. The perfect Lamb. Against what? First of all, salvation and eternity. Mm -hmm. But then for healing and, and abundance or yes, prosperity, yes, where yes. all of you, if, if any of you yes. aren't struggling in, in, in some of these areas, turn it off because you we got nothing to say to you <laughs> we preach out of faith so um, anyway uh, so you see that the the blood the death angel whether it's death of your finances mm -hmm. or death of your eternal soul or death of your health or death death of your hope mm -hmm. I mean hope yes. is vital and critical uh, to your humanity you can't even have faith yeah. without hope. Without hope, there is no future. Yes, faith yes. is the substance of things hoped for. Yes. And and the thing that you're told today is there's no hope. They'll yeah. never pay off the debt. Yeah. You'll never get ahead. You'll never break out of the system. You'll cancer you can't be beat or diabetes can't be beat and, and, and no hope. And you're going, 
God can do anything. Yes, he can. Well, we can segue off that toward the resurrection in this sense, that when Jesus was crucified, it was a hopeless time for the disciples mm -hmm. because they thought he was coming to rule and reign them. Mm -hmm. They thought he was going to overthrow the Roman Empire and that he yes. was going to be king. Mm -hmm. Natural they, they missed the part about he came first as a suffering servant and he's coming the next time as king. We've never seen Jesus like he's going to be when he returns. But that's what happened at the resurrection. Yes. Yes. That's yes. where they yes. were. When the news was that Jesus had risen, uh, they were at their the lowest. Uh, and hiding. And hiding, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. The lowest point. And Peter had rejected him yes. and denied him. Yes. And so he had to be lower than low. And then, of course, Judas was so hopeless. And if he would have let, you made this point, if he would have waited a few more hours, the price would have been paid mm -hmm. for what Judas did because Jesus yes. would have died. Yes. The, the, it, was, it was an act of self-righteousness. Mm -hmm. I'm going to atone for my own right, sin. Right. Yes. I will kill myself. Yes. That's the sadness. That's where religion will take you. Yes. Self-sacrifice, which means nothing to God. His sacrifice is Amen. everything. Amen. There's times in your life that you're going to, you'll have, I mean, a mother knows self-sacrifice. You know, a dad yeah. knows self-sacrifice. All of us know self-sacrifice, but it counts nothing towards your eternity in the sense of, you're just, that's the love of God moving through you. That doesn't bring the love of God. That's the love of God in you that what ha, has you to walk yes. in these situations right. willfully and gladfully and say, hey, it's worth it. So uh, in the resurrection, we keep speaking about the resurrection, but this is a, a, a multi-part thing. First of all, there had to be the Passover lamb, had to be yes. spotless. Yes, right? yes. Had to be sinless or spotless yeah. as it right. were. Right, right. And had to go through inspection. The, yes. The high priest would inspect the lamb. So we come up to Jesus' day. He's arrested. And what do they do for the next day and a half? They inspect him. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The high priest's yes. inspecting. Right. Uh, Herod, the king, mm -hmm. inspects him. Pilate, mm -hmm. the Gentiles, inspect him. Mm -hmm. and, and Pilate was the only brainy one who went, looks good to me. Found Nothing nothing wrong with him. Yeah. yeah. And so... All he's he goes just like the lamb was supposed to be. He is inspected and found clean, and all false charges and everything had to come against him because he was found spotless. So now he's eligible to be the sacrifice. Yes, and you made the point um, um, several months ago talking about who sacrificed the lamb. It always was the high priest, mm -hmm. and so it had to be the Jewish hierarchy that turned Jesus in and had him sacrificed because that's what how the lamb was sacrificed. It was the high mm -hmm. priest that did it. Mm -hmm. So they had to do it with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Everything, everything followed the pattern. That's why they gave God, us the pattern. Yeah. Yes. That's yes. why God gave us the yes. pattern God, was to show you he, Jesus Christ was going to come this way and fulfill everything. Yes, yes, and he did. He fulfilled everything according to the pattern. So we talked last time about, okay, there's the, there's the crucifixion. And on the way to that cross is the, we call seven places mm -hmm. that he shed yes, his blood. Yes, you know, the right. bruising, yes. the sweating great drops of blood yes. in, the, in one, one case, the piercings on his hands and his the feet crown. and crown. the crown of thorns. And, and then uh, the final one was the piercing in the side. But then the stripes that were on his yes. back. Yes. You were gonna say something about the 39 stripes. Yes. Uh, uh, it was very interesting many, many years ago when Jesus Christ, the superstar, was in going around the nation. And superstar. <laughs> my Uncle John and Aunt Marilee Mears took my husband, H.L. and I, to this theater along with Lester Summerall. We were all guests of my aunt and uncle, and they wanted to take us to the Lincoln, no, not the Lincoln, yes, it was the Lincoln Theater in uh, Washington, D.C. to see this play. I cannot remember anything about the play except for one thing. In that darkened theater that night, they made 39 stripes, strikes with a whip, and you could hear that whip with that horrible stinging sound 39 times 
in the quietness of that building, in the quietness of that theater. And each time there would be a strike on Jesus' back, you would hear a groan. And by the time that was done, I'm sure everybody in that theater was as impacted as me. It really drove home what Jesus bore on his body for our uh, sicknesses and our diseases and everything that isn't right according to the way God makes us. And that healing for the body and as well as the soul and the spirit that Jesus paid for with his blood, every bit of that culminates in taking care of disease and sickness that was, that is, and that will yet come. There's people today that will say, well, there's not healing today. I beg to differ. I know there's healing today. I personally have had great healings. And not only that, it would take hours to go through the healings. And some of you have heard some of our healings in our family. So you've come too late to tell me that God doesn't heal today. I know God does. And that was just so impressive upon me. And this afternoon, I was, that all came back fresh. And I could hear that whip again. And as that whip came down on the back of Jesus, it had uh, bits of, of metal in it. And I don't know what a cat of nine tails. And it tore up all his muscle and all of his back. And he was as unsightly as anything. It, it, we couldn't look upon him because he was so unsightly. And those people that day, I don't know how they stood it. And his mother right there with him through all of that. I don't know how she went through that. I couldn't do that if either one of my children were being attacked like that. And I've even heard, um, I heard one minister uh, talking about that in Isaiah where it talks about by his stripes we are healed, that in the Hebrew, that that actually is a singular word, by his stripe, that actually he was, his, stri his back was so striped that there was not one piece of flesh. It was yeah. like one yeah. big stripe on his back. Yeah. And so when you know that and think of yeah. that, that it, that's just, it's, it's beyond recognition, but, but going forward into the resurrection. And I remember Brother David Schock preached this one time. And you know, sometimes we hear stories and you don't put it into perspective or, or think of it as real. Mm -hmm. But he talked about Jesus coming forth out of the grave and, and the disciples uh, recognizing him. And I know sometimes he kept himself hidden, but he wasn't grotesque. They, people yeah, weren't yeah. turning away. And Brother Schock <laughs> said, you know, dead men don't heal. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's right. So if God wouldn't have raised that flesh, yes. when, his, when, when his life came back into his body, he would have still been flesh just hanging off and, you know, like yeah. zombie-like maybe. Mm -hmm. But he came back full of life and whole. And the only thing it talks about Bones. is the nail prints mm -hmm. in his hands and his feet. Awesome. Just awesome. So the next step, he goes to the cross. And he's put on this cross, oddly enough, like the pieces of a door frame. <laughs> the blood is smeared on yes, that yes, door frame. Yes, yes, yes. The blood on yes. the door of the house of the world. Mm -hmm. And he's put on that cross. He gets through it and he says it is finished. Yes. It's done. And he dies without any bones broken as the Bible, the, the, Psalms. Uh, the Psalms talks about with no broken bones, mm -hmm. where they came to break it in one of the Gospels, yeah. and they saw he was already dead. So their bright idea is, well, a sticking. So they pierce him in, like in the mm -hmm. side and in the heart, kind of up in here. Right. But they didn't break his legs. They did that to make you die faster, because yeah. they wanted yeah. to get out of here. They did it to the other two. Because they would push themselves up to yeah. be able to breathe. And the thing mm -hmm. about uh, uh, crucifixion, you died from as asphyxiation, because yeah. you couldn't get breath. And so they would push their the criminals would push their feet up one that which must have been horrible because they were nailed but push it up to be able to get breath and so they break their legs so they mm -hmm. couldn't push themselves up and make it die faster 
But one of the points I want to make about on the cross, what they had written across the top of the cross, Pilate wrote, Jesus from Nazareth, the King of the Jews. And he had it written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek for the whole world to see. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews, whether they believed or whether they didn't. And maybe it was even to make fun of Jesus, but it was a true statement that was written on that cross. But it, it, his, his death was powerful to the point of earthquake. At the three o'clock hour, I believe the word says, there was a strong earthquake. It was such an earthquake that the dead came out of their graves. That's amazing <laughs> that dead people would rise during that particular time. And, and you would think when that kind of thing was happening, everybody would bow on their knees and say, oh, Jesus, forgive me. But not so. Yeah, but you know, I, I think... Um, as, as everything that God does, there's such a natural explanation. Oh, yes. That yeah. people don't associate it. Explain everything you know, away. Yeah, they can explain everything away. So, um, you know, like in the movie, the, the soldier said, truly, this is the Son of God. So we know that's true. But, uh, you know, they just didn't, uh, I mean, even, um, was it Pilate's wife war uh, warned him? Had a dream. Mm -hmm. Had a dream. Leave mm -hmm. this man alone. Mm -hmm. Don't be a part of it. So, I mean, there were plenty of signposts, but, yes. it, you know, yes. in the uh, last year at Easter, they showed um, the Bible, and they were showing about when Jesus was crucified. And I love this scene. They showed the high priest in the temple going on with their temple worship, and then in the background, you could see Jesus going up the hill of Golgotha, yeah. carrying the cross, and I thought, how apropos that what God is doing so many times is out the, outside the parameters yes. of religion. Yes. That yes. religion's going through all the motions and doing everything that it should be doing, and they're missing what God is doing, yes. what He's doing right now um, at that time. So that was very interesting. So He goes to the cross, and He's uh, laid in the grave. Yes. And there's all kinds of evidence, all kinds of things. You can stay all day here, right here. So the important parts were He had to go to the cross. He had to be first of all, without sin, mm -hmm. and he had to be inspected, and then he had to be crucified. That were the critical elements yes, for our yes, eternal life. Yes. Now, if the story ends there, glorious, wonderful story, make movies, it's all fun, inspirational, but it has no value. That's right, that's right. Because there's one piece missing. Yeah. And that piece is this, when that Sunday morning, as we call it, but it's probably Saturday night. Mm -hmm which was the beginning of, of the Jewish day. Yeah. Is that yes. If you go read Genesis, you'll go, and God said in the morning, the morning. or the evening, evening and the morning were the first day, evening and the morning were second. So the evening starts the day. So he comes up out of there, and um, that was, turns out, if that doesn't happen, it is yep. a sign the sacrifice was not acceptable. Right. If there was one sin forever, going that way and forever going that way for mm -hmm. eternity mm -hmm. back and eternity forward. If yep. there was one sin that wasn't covered and wasn't forgiven mm -hmm. that God judged and saw and look, if he hadn't accepted that, if one of your sins were left, yes, if yes. any of it, Jesus couldn't have come up out of that. Yes. Grave. Yes. He would not have been accepted. Yes. So the empty tomb is the seal of the most high God saying, I accept it. It's done. Amen. And he came up out of that place and spent 40 days here. Yes. Recurring theme all through the Bible, the 40 days. Mm -hmm. And he spent 40 days going around teaching. And it says he met with the disciples personally at least three times in some large groups mm -hmm. and, and uh, doing stuff. Mom mentioned the dead that were raised when he mm -hmm. went into the grave. And it says they came up out of that grave. This is at the later chapters of Matthew. Yes. You'll read it. I, I know it's down around verse 52 or 50, somewhere in that 26 range of, of Matthew. Mm -hmm. And uh, just reading it all those years, and then one day you went, wait a minute, wait a minute, what? Yeah. <laughs> and it says they came up out of the grave, and it, it was like they kind of milled around there mm -hmm. until he came up out yes, of the grave. Right. And then they, then went, they in. went out into the city. Yes. And we've heard speculation, David, 
some of the past righteous that had, had died in Jerusalem came up out of that grave and went out of the city. Now, let me, take, let me take a little aside here. You mentioned earlier, how could they not believe? Mm -hmm. Because faith has nothing to do with seeing. Exactly. If you, you don't see. understand this, and I can give you story after story after story through the Bible to illustrate this, but it is not by empirical evidence. And, mm -hmm. and if, if you're living right now paying any attention, you'll understand that the people that yell the loudest about empirical evidence are the ones that does, don't see evidence. <laughs> I mean, 15 years, nothing's been happening, but it's still there. I mean, they are doggedly faithful to their science and to their medicine and to everything else, even when there's no evidence. Yes. You present them with the contrary evidence to the economy or to this. Nope. They don't believe you. Mm -hmm. Empirical evidence doesn't mean anything. Right. Everybody's a person of faith. I'm telling you, even a yes. scientist yes. is a person of faith. That's right. Their faith is going this direction or that direction. Yes. And at some point you have to realize that we are beings of faith. And you've yes. got to believe somebody. Yes. Right? You either believe yourself or you believe God or you believe somebody else. Every time you watch the news and you'll only watch one news, you've given him authority in your life. Right. I believe you. What you say is yeah. true. And our faith always is in Jesus Christ. Right. Not our just faith, faith is not in the events. Faith in, our yes. faith is in Jesus yes. Christ that he yes. has the events yes. in control. Right. So he comes up out of that grave and then he ascends uh, 40 days later. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Something yes. like that? No, 50, wasn't it? No, 50 is when Pentecost, when Pentecost came. came. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, 40 um, days sorry, because 40 then days. they yeah. went and waited 10 yeah. days. And, and so he ascends and it says in a, in a great, in a cloud. Yes, with 500 now, watching him. speculation also talks about that cloud being those the cloud of witnesses who who'd been taken out of abraham's bosom you know that right. sheol haiti down right. there that had the lower compartment the and had dead. the mm -hmm. upper compartment the righteous dead yes. or abraham's bosom right and that's one of those stories again where lazarus the rich the the yeah. poor man and the rich man mm -hmm. went to the lower part lazarus went to the top mm -hmm. this rich man says send lazarus to dip his finger yes. abraham says i can't do it mm -hmm. jesus yeah. is telling this the story. divide's too great Divides too great. Then he yes. says, what? Send, Send Moses Lazarus Moses. back from the dead. <laughs> yeah. So that my brothers right. will then believe. And not be where I am. Yeah. And what was the response from Abraham? If they don't believe the law, law and, the, and prophets, the prophets. If they don't believe the word. They're not going to believe. Even if they see it's the true. dead empirical evidence, yes. the yes. dead yes. raised to life, they won't believe because seeing has nothing to That's do right. with believing. Amen. You have to believe, and then the seeing will come. But seeing will never get one person born again. That's well, why they call it signs and wonders. Exactly. It's, it's a mean, sign, and it makes you wonder. But the only way you get born again is faith. I yes, but, I mean, we, yes. we have that happen in our lives all the time. Mm -hmm. You're sitting in traffic. It's backed up six lanes. I can't believe the traffic. How can you not believe it? You're sitting in it. You see it. You see it for miles, but I can't believe it. Why? Because I choose not. It's out of my parameters. I can't believe this is happening. Yet you're sitting and experiencing it. Yes. Yes. So the resurrection has happened. That is what we're celebrating in yes. this Passover right. season is the death, the burial, and what happened during that period and the resurrection, which was the seal of approval that it was accepted and completed and finished. And eternally, it's done. Yes. And can I, I can I bring something else up about about Jesus being inspected? Going back to that just a minute, Jesus was found perfect, without sin, not because not only because he had not done activities not he of didn't sin, sin, he was born without it. He was born without it, which is what we are born in a sinful nature because of fallen man's fallen state because of Adam. But this is why God why Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, because his life came from the Father, which is true. You know, whenever you want to know who a father is of a child, they take a DNA test to match it to the father, not to the mother. And so Jesus had no sin from, he had no sinful nature. Because he had the blood of the Father. Because the, yes, because the God was his father. father. You're not a sinner because you sin. You sin because you're a sinner. Well, is that a play on words? No. Are you a dog? Is a dog a dog because he barks or does he bark because he's a dog? Well, he barks because he's a dog because I can bark, but that doesn't make me a dog. So she they, can. <laughs> the actions <laughs> don't make us 
It's what we are is what comes out of us. But I want to make a point by, about, about Resurrection Day. I believe it is the greatest day ever in history. It far passes Christmas because Jesus could have been born and lived a glorious, wonderful life, giving praise to the Father. But if it wasn't for Resurrection Day, he would have been just another good man, another good teacher. But this sets him up as the true Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So to kind of bring this home before we go. I gotta make one more point. So put that on hold. Go ahead. <laughs> Second closing. It's very important to me. My daughter and I are both ministers. And I do want to make the point that it was to two women that Jesus showed himself. <laughs> and I do want to make the point, they had to go to the disciples to tell them Jesus had risen because the disciples were huddling in fear in a room locked away. And Jesus, when he came, he had to come through the wall even to get to the disciples. And I only make that point because there's such a teaching that women have no value. And this has not been a problem with me. People that have a problem with women ministers, that's your problem. It's not mine because I know the calling of God. But I just think it's kind of awesome there's another one of those facts that people don't believe that Jesus told the women, go and tell my disciples and Peter the good news. Romans chapter 10. Uh, it is, uh, starts off down there around verse 10. It starts off and it's, it's going back to Deuteronomy. And I believe Moses' yes, words. Yes. But it is, is yes. this prophetic thing that Paul begins to talk about. He says, so who shall go and bring Christ up mm -hmm. from below? Don't yeah. say this. Don't say who shall go and bring Christ up from beneath. Or don't say who is going to go and bring Christ down from above. Yes. But what does faith say? Faith says, if you believe in your heart mm -hmm. and confess with your mouth yes. that Jesus Not your sin. is the Christ, that Jesus is the Lord, you shall be saved. Yes. If you believe, if you confess that he is Lord and you believe, you will be yes. saved. Yes. That's what we're yes. here to talk to you about today and to finish up with. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're looking for empirical mm -hmm. evidence, mm -hmm. you will spend your life yes. in futility. He loves you. Yes. Jesus was spent, sent specifically to the Think of every end zone you've ever seen in the NFL football and a sign that's sticking up behind the goalpost that says John 3, 16. Yes, yes. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting, everlasting life. It didn't say if they didn't sin. It didn't say if they kept repenting. Yes. It didn't say if they did good works. It said if you believe him. Yes. And the other yes. stuff, guess what? That's the Holy Ghost job. Yes. The good works and all the other stuff, that's the Holy Ghost job to work that out in you. But there's only one way to be saved Amen. and continue in that eternity. Do you believe Jesus Christ? Amen. So we ask you that question tonight. Do you believe? Mm -hmm. And if you don't, we want to invite you tonight to pray with us. Yes. and receive him yes. into your heart and into your life because he loves you today this weekend or whenever you hear this video this can be your <coughs> resurrection day this can be the day that you yes. come up out of the grave of defeat and destruction and and sin and despair into the life of the, the glorious life of the lord jesus christ <coughs> so we want to ask you to pray with us tonight say this with us father in jesus name I come to you today in faith. I come to you and I ask you and, I, and to receive me unto yourself. I confess that I am a sinner and I need a savior. I believe you were the Christ. Yes. I believe that you died for me. And I believe that when you came up out of that grave, that you are taking me with you. Yes. You came, you brought me out of that grave as well. And I receive that. 
And I become a child of God tonight by faith in Jesus Christ. It is finished. It is finished. Yes. It is finished. Yes. It is finished. It is finished. And welcome to the family. And then number two, yes. everything that Jesus did on the way to the cross, on the cross, in the ground, and up out of that grave is now part of the package. Yes. Health and wholeness yes. and hope and joy and peace and, a, and, and your needs met according to his riches and glory by Amen. Christ Jesus. Amen. That's part Amen. of the finished work of yes. Christ. Yes. Anyone else? I love it when I hear that Jesus did not come to make good pe bad people good. He came to make dead people live. Amen. Amen. And now if you have prayed that prayer tonight and you have believed in Jesus Christ and confessed that he is Lord, you are now living. Amen. You come from death into life. And as Daryl was saying, your resurrection, your resurrection this weekend. And what's going to happen for him now? We believe that the Holy Spirit, yes, the Holy Spirit of power yes. is going to infuse yes. you. Yes. And some of you may even have an, a, an experience of speaking in tongues when he comes in and evidence of that. But the Holy Spirit is power yes. that descends from one high and fills you. Yes. to accomplish and go out Amen. and live the life. You know, the thief on the cross didn't need the Holy Spirit. Right. Yes. Because he wasn't going to live. That's yeah. right. The Holy Spirit he is to live in this right. realm, filled mm -hmm. with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Anyway, if, if, uh, if we crossed your doctrine up tonight, it won't be the first time. <laughs> or the last. <laughs> <laughs> We're not right. God's right. Yes. Amen. And we just want to bless you and encourage you and have a great week. And I hope you find a lot of eggs. And happy Resurrection Day. Amen. God bless you.